So, good morning. Um, in the last lecture, we talked about uh, total synthesis of morphine by Gates and uh, Larry Wauerman's group. So, today we will continue our discussion on the total synthesis of uh, morphine by two more groups. The first one is uh, from Parker's group and the second one is from James White. And in the case of Parker's total synthesis, he has used a, a tandem cyclization where you generate a radical. So, that undergoes 6 endo and when it comes back, it removes the phenyl thio radical and overall he took about uh, you know 11 steps to complete the total synthesis of uh, morphine from commercially available iso manually let us see uh, his retro synthesis and how he has planned this synthesis using the key radical cyclization reaction so the first disconnection is uh, um, this bond where this can be introduced using a uh, Hydroamination reaction, uh, first you remove the tosyl group uh, followed by intramolecular hydroamination, one should, one should be able to introduce this particular bond. As well as you know later you want has to introduce this double bond, for that you have a, a hydroxyl handle, so that can be used to introduce the double bond. Then this is the key reaction, the key reaction is uh, phi exo key radical cyclization reaction, you have a bromine. So, it can generate a radical here. So, that radical can add first phi xo, then this can add a 6 endo, okay, 6 endo and to form this radical, that radical when it comes back, this thiophenyl group will go out. So, that is how the tetracyclic core structure of morphine was planned. And this can be obtained by a simple Mitsunobu reaction on this alcohol, uh, this corresponding phenol is the nucleophile. Okay. And further retrosynthesis, the fragment A can be obtained from uh, isovanilin in few steps where basically you have to introduce a phenyl group and then homologate the aldehyde. The other fragment that is fragment B can be obtained from this epoxide where you know you have to you know if you open this epoxide you will get this allylic alcohol and this can be obtained from metamethoxy phenethylamine using birch reduction and hydrolysis as key steps okay so what are the key reactions one is birch reduction which we have already discussed the other key reaction which is used is mitsunobu reaction so mitsunobu reaction is nothing but another method for making ester you start with the carboxylic acid and then treat with alcohol in the presence of triphenylphosphine and uh, diethyl aso dicarboxylate, you form the corresponding ester. This is the diethyl aso dicarboxylate. One can also use diisopropyl diaso carboxylate. So, basically, what happens in this reaction? This diaso will be reduced to get the corresponding hydrazine derivative, and the triphenylphosphine will be oxidized to triphenylphosphine oxide. And the overall process of esterification from carboxylic acid and alcohol is after forming the ester, you get a water molecule. From the water molecule, hydrogen goes to this diethyl isodicarboxylate and then oxygen goes to triphenyl phosphine oxide. Basically, it is a dehydrating reaction and one can also call it as redox reaction because the reagents which you use for this particular transformation is dead and triphenyl phosphine. The triphenyl phosphine gets oxidized and dead gets reduced. So, during this redox reaction, your alcohol and carboxylic acid are coupled to form the corresponding ester. The mechanism is first the triphenyl phosphine attacks the nitrogen of uh, diethyl aso dicarboxylate, then the other nitrogen picks up hydrogen from carboxylic acid. So, you get a carboxylate anion and the positive charge is on the triphenyl phosphine. So, now the other substrate oxygen of the hydroxyl group attacks the triphenyl phosphine. So, you get ROPPH3 plus. So, this is the key intermediate in the mechanism for Mitsunobu reaction as well as many related reactions. So, this R1, the nucleophile can attack the R1 from the back side so that the RO bond can easily break to form triphenyl phosphine oxide. So, that is why this attack of RCO to minus 
is an SN2 reaction. Okay. So, the, the carboxylate attacks the R1 from the back side and that forms the ester and triphenyl phosphine oxide. Okay. Here are some examples where you can see this is a menthol. So, one can do Mitsunobu reaction and look at the stereo center, it is exactly opposite. Similarly, so this is again at a secondary alcohol and you do Mitsunobu reaction and followed by hydrolysis. If you hydrolyze, then you get the completely uh, inverted uh, hydroxyl group. Okay. So, how the fragment A was synthesized by Parker? It took isovanilin and then brominated at this carbon using bromine and iron. Then he did uh, this uh, stabilized Wittig to get the corresponding thioenol ether. Okay. So, that is the fragment A which is used for Mitsunobu reaction. For fragment B, he started with metamethoxy phenyl ethyl amine and metal ammonia reduction that is birch reduction gave this diene and if you hydrolyze this enol ether you will get the ketone and also the double bond will migrate to give the more you know substituted and conjugated enone. So, you get this alpha beta unsaturated ketone and during that process if you use tosyl chloride okay, you can protect this amine as N NH tosyl then methylate this NH to get N methyl as you know in morphine you need this N methyl. Okay. Then you have this enone that enone can be reduced using Luche condition that is sodium borohydride cerium chloride you get the allylic alcohol and using the allylic alcohol stereo center okay, of course this is relative it is a racemic compound uh, you can direct the epoxidation using the alcohol. So, you get the, the epoxide delivered from the same side of the hydroxyl group. Then you treat with uh, Lewis acid titanium isopropoxide which opens the epoxide to get the corresponding allylic alcohol. Okay. So, then uh, between these two this can be protected selectively using TBDMS triflate. So, that is fragment B. So, once we have fragment A and fragment B then carry out the Mitsunobu reaction. Okay. So, first step is the Mitsunobu reaction for combining the fragment A and fragment B to get this bicyclic compound. So, this set the stage for the key 5 XO radical cyclization followed by 6 endo and elimination of the thiophenol. So, when you treat with uh, AABN, TBDH this will happen and before that this bulky TBDMS group can be cleaved using a fluoride source to get the corresponding alcohol then you do the key reaction. So, that key reaction as I said first it forms the radical that radical undergoes 5 XO to give this intermediate and again this radical will further undergo 6 endo to give this radical. Now, this will come back when it comes back you eliminate the phenyl thio radical. Okay. So, now you form 4 rings the last ring is, is the cisnumbered piperidine ring. So, that is formed by lithium and tertiary butanol in ammonia. So, here what happens first the N tosyl group gets cleaved and, and then the hydroamination takes place to introduce the fifth ring. So, now you have all the 5 rings in uh, correct place. So, what is to be done is you have to introduce a double bond here and also demethylate. So, what is done? You do Swan oxidation. So, that will give you dihydrocodinone. So, the dihydrocodinone has been already converted. Okay. In the last lecture, I talked about this dihydrocodinone has been already converted into morphine. So, this completes the formal synthesis of morphine by Parker's group. So, Parker took about uh, 11 steps to complete the total synthesis of morphine. Key steps are Mitsunobu reaction and tandem radical cyclization and he also started with simple starting material isovanilin which is commercially available and metamethoxy phenethylamine which also can be easily prepared. The overall yield of this is 11.63 percent which is significantly higher than 
other methods reported as thus far. Okay. That brings me to the fourth total synthesis of morphine which was reported by James White. Why I want to discuss this was the earlier synthesis uh, if I look at um, first one was racemic synthesis and then second and third were asymmetric synthesis but they were uh, they synthesized the naturally occurring morphine whereas James White's group they wanted to synthesize the enantiomer of naturally occurring morphine that is uh, plus plus morphine okay so the key step in the total synthesis of james white's group is a carbinoid ch insertion okay so that is another clever use of rhodium acetate catalyzed uh, carbinoid ch insertion okay i'll i'll come back when i talk about the total synthesis so the retrosynthetic analysis, uh, the first step is the reduction of uh, the ketone to allylic alcohol and um, that can be obtained uh, from this particular alcohol as you know oxidation and then introduction of the double bond, you will get this. The second key step is the Bergman rearrangement. Uh, if you have a ketone and the Bergman rearrangement, you can introduce this uh, NH, then you can methylate. And the second key step is the CH insertion. So the CH insertion of that CH2 bond was done from this starting material. So you can see this one gets inserted at this carbon. Okay. So let us see how it was done when we talk about the total synthesis. And here this CO bond was done using intramolecular SN2 like reaction and that can be obtained from this ketoaldehyde using a Robinson allylation sequence. So if you look at this cyclohexenone, as you know when you have cyclohexenone, one reaction which should come to your mind is Robinson annulation sequence. So the Robinson annulation sequence was used to introduce this cyclohexenone and that can be obtained from this particular compound using asymmetric hydrogenation. Okay, uh, Nayori, as you know, Nayori has developed several methods. So yeah, one modified version was used to highly stereoselectively reduce this double bond, and this can be obtained from vanilla. Okay, this is the simple retrosynthesis uh, put forward by James White, and let us see how he has successfully accomplished the total synthesis of plus morphine starting from vanilla. And this is the mechanism for carbonide CH insertion. So if you have a, a diazo compound and then if you treat with either copper or dirhodium tetraacetate, you get this carbonide and that inserts to any CH bond and you will get like this. Okay? And there are many examples in the literature, uh, one of them is uh, shown here. So here you have a diazo compound, either it can insert here or, can, or it can insert here and this is the major product and this is the minor product. So both are possible. Okay. Well, let us see how uh, White's group started the total synthesis and how they accomplished. They started with uh, uh, esovanilin and then you do a Staube condensation. Okay, this Staube condensation was done with dimethyl succinate, sodium ethoxide and dimethyl succinate. So you get this particular alpha beta unsaturated ester which is required for asymmetric hydrogenation. At the same time you also have the CH2COH which is required for cyclization either at this carbon. Okay. So the asymmetric hydrogenation was done using this catalyst, that catalyst is uh, little complex. Okay, so this is what uh, you know the ligand which is used with uh, the chiral um, the rhodium species. So that gives this isomer. This is a uh, high uh, enantiomeric excess was obtained, and then the next step is the fetal calf cyclization. Okay, the expected one was so whether it can undergo cyclization here. But unfortunately, what happened? 
this cyclized at this carbon. So, not ortho to hydroxyl group, but it went to para. So, it says that the para is more reactive. So, in order to force this carboxylic acid to cyclize at ortho with respect to hydroxyl group, you need to block the para position. So, that was simply easily achieved by bromination. So, when you do the bromination, it goes to the para position, then you do the product of acylation, intramolecular product of acylation. Now, you can see it underwent, it can undergo only at one place. Okay? So, that is how this uh, substituted tetralone was prepared. Then once you have this, you do not need the bromine, is not it? The bromine served its purpose of forcing the carboxylic acid to undergo product of acylation ortho to the hydroxyl. So, reductive removal of bromine gave this uh, tetralone. The next step is the Robinson annihilation sequence. For doing the Robinson annihilation sequence, first you have to hydrolyze this ester to carboxylic acid, then you introduce an aldehyde here. Okay. That was done by treatment with potassium hydride and methyl formate. So, you introduce the aldehyde, then you do the Robinson annihilation sequence. When you do the Robinson annihilation sequence with methyl vinyl ketone, so first the 1,4 addition takes place, 1,4 addition takes place with methyl vinyl ketone and at the same time the carboxylic acid adds to the aldehyde to form this lactaldehyde. Okay. Then sodium hydroxide will cyclase here to get the corresponding cyclohexenone. At the same time, the decarbonylation also takes place. The decarbonylation takes place to give this tricyclic compound. So, once you have this tricyclic compound, so what is to be done? You methylate this. So, esterification with diisomethane, you get the corresponding methyl ester and one has to be careful because you also have a phenolic hydroxyl group. So, both carboxylic acid and phenolic hydroxyl group can be methylated if you treat with diisomethane, but careful treatment with one equivalent of diisomethane, one can selectively methylate the carboxylic acid and not the phenol. So, once that is done, then you have to cyclize this, is not it? So, that is done by treating with bromine first, but as you know when you treat with bromine, bromine also will go here, is not it? Yeah, that is what happened, you, you brominated both, this on treatment with DBU. Okay. You can imagine how on treatment with DBU it will cyclize here. It is possible because DBU also can isomerize the double bond. So, it goes through this deconjugation, the double bond was deconjugated, then the cyclization can take place, you know, it is an intramolecular SN2 reaction, then followed by again migration of the double bond. Okay, now, if the double bond migrates, again you get the tetra substituted compound, but it is in conjugation with carbonyl group. So, that is how it was done. So, what is next? You have to reduce the carbonyl group to corresponding alcohol. Okay. So, allylic alcohol was done. Then this bromine, you do not need. Okay. So, reductively remove the bromine under hydrogenolysis condition. Your four rings are ready now. Okay. Then the fifth ring, white as I mentioned, has used an intramolecular carbonoid CH insertion as the key reaction, is not it? So, that means you have to convert or you have to hydrolyze the ester to carboxylic acid, convert that into diazo ketone. Okay. So, first you protect this free hydroxyl group okay, uh, as mom ether, then you hydrolyze the ester to carboxylic acid, you have the carboxylic acid it is easy to convert a carboxylic acid into diazo ketone in two steps. Convert this into acid chloride by treating with uh, oxalyl chloride to form the acyl chloride. Now, you treat with diazo methane. So, you get the corresponding diazo ketone. So, once you have this diazo ketone, next what you do is 
treat with dirhodium tetraacetate so the dirhodium tetraacetate first it will form the corresponding rhodium carbonide and it will undergo insertion at this ch so that will give you directly this compound okay now you have the pentacyclic compound so what is missing is you have to insert a nhme isn't it so that is normally done using a beckman reagent you have a ketone then once you have ketone you can think of using beckman reagent to carry out the ring expansion so for that what you should do you should convert the carbonyl into oxime so that was done by treating with hydroxylamine to get the oxime the oxime was made as a good leaving group okay by treating with para bromo benzene sulfonyl chloride so n brosylate was formed then you do the beckman rearrangement by treating with acetic acid so that will give the beckman rearrangement product that is the corresponding six membered lactam the six membered lactam now one can easily methylate by treating with sodium hydride and methyl iodide you get the corresponding n methylated compound and the carbonyl group also should be removed and the mom group also should be cleaved so the mom group was cleaved using hbr in acetonitrile and the hydroxyl was oxidized under desmartin perovian condition to get the ketone and the double bond was introduced okay in one part using phenyl selenyl chloride and acetic acid and reduce the ketone that is this one as well as remove the carbonyl that is lactam to corresponding amine was done in one step with lithium aluminum hydride and now what is left is the removal of the methoxy methyl group so that will give the morphine that was easily achieved using lewis acid vbr3 at very low temperature one can do demethylation so that gave the corresponding natural product that is plus morphine which is the enantiomer of the naturally occurring morphine so this is the first total synthesis of unnatural morphine okay so this was reported in 1997 in joc again the starting material like other uh, synthesis of uh, morphine was uh, isovanillin and he used two key reactions one is uh, the carbonide ch insertion initially then later he used beckman rearrangement to expand the five membered ketone to six membered lactam so overall he took about 28 steps and yield was uh, considering that it is 28 steps uh, 3% overall it's uh, quite good okay so with this i'll stop and we have completed the four total synthesis of morphine and we'll discuss some more synthesis of alkaloids okay thank you